Hey everyone, it's Rita with Everything Homemade and it is July 20th today, 2020 and we are going to do just a really quick update of the garden as, as you can see, look at those tomatoes, right? I just want to let everyone know really quickly here that my ebook for Hearts Cry is on sale for 99 cents for the month of July and that is the month ahead before the second book Hearts Courage comes out. So if you want to order the paperback or or read the ebook go right ahead and get prepared for those of you that have already read Hearts Cry, Hearts Courage is coming out soon. So we're going to start with the marigolds. Look at how much they filled out. You can't even see my bed anymore. It is totally covered. And Meadow, Meadow, you just love the marigolds. And so it is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. And it's everything's starting to bloom and it looks really, really awesome. And there's so many bees that are coming. Um, the sun is just hitting them and guess what which is comes no surprise it rained all day yesterday You can tell the ground is moist. We got really super good drainage in this garden So there's never standing water. It always drains away. So we're really lucky there, but it rained all day again Yesterday, so take a look here these are flowers so the beans have started to flower. They actually started yesterday and they are covered with flowers. So, so by, you know, three weeks, we could easily be having some, some beans coming. And that means some canning that needs to happen. So they are filling out here. They're looking really good. On my other side here, we have the pumpkins there blooming. And take a look at this pumpkin right here. So I'm just going to put my camera down a little lower. This is my hand in comparison so you can kind of see the size of it. So a nice size pumpkin growing there. Um, let's see, let's start, start looking for some more pumpkins here through the patch. So we got, got another pumpkin here. It's a little bit more green. It's a darker green than the other one. And I'm just going to walk around this patch here because there's another one hidden somewhere. There it is. This one's huge. Take a look at this. And it's being squashed a little bit by the rack. It's actually kind of going, growing around it. But this one is huge. Let's see if we can find some more. So as I'm walking around the rack system here, you can see how they're starting to fill out. And there's some more pumpkins started. So these here, if they've been fertilized, they'll be growing pumpkins now on the rack. So, so that, that's the whole point. And, and uh, so when I see something like this, you see how this is drooping down? What I'd like to do is is just take it and just shove it back up. So so I'm kind of training them to turn the corner back on the rack. So here's another pumpkin growing and I'm just going to take off this this end here. So there's another pumpkin growing on the rack. So keep praying you guys. These pumpkins are growing quick and I think there's one underneath here too, but I don't know if I can sneak my camera underneath all this leaves. Anyway, but they are doing really good and you can see that this level is starting to fill out. So things are looking really good on the pumpkin side. Now the peas, holy smokes, did they just literally start to bloom. I mean, from, from nothing last time I filmed, to blooming, to having little tiny peas. I'll take a look. Little tiny peas growing. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? Okay, there's some more. So now what we can do is, is pick some snap peas too. Okay, and take a look. 
Look at those right, right there. You see them hanging? Awesome. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pick, pick, let's say this side. So a foot in, I'm going to tell the kids they cannot pick that particular part of this row because what I want to do is save seed. So I want some PC for next year because I love this variety. They do so well here. There's, I never really have any issue with powdery mildew on them, root rot, anything, and I want to save seed for next year. So what I'm going to do is get some flag tape and, and go, hey, from this section, this foot of the row, we do not pick. The corn, Grace, stand by the corn, wave your hand. Go, go behind it again. Show them, wave. There, where's Grace? Oh dear, it's growing taller than you. So, so the corn is going crazy. And, and so we had one really good day. It was the most beautiful day of the whole entire summer. And things just literally exploded when we had 24 hours of, of warmth and, and literally like 20, hours of daylight it was just absolutely phenomenal and the corn just took off and you can see it see from here um, you can see that it wants to start um, sending out out for for pollination right here so I'm hoping that more and more will do that I mean these are huge aren't they grace yeah just pull pull one out to show them like they are really, really beautiful looking plants, healthy as ever. Now we just need them to pollinate and grow some cobs, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so the red beets, take a look at them. They're doing fantastic. Um, and you can see the heavy dew plus the rain. I mean, they're all wet here, even in the in the sun. Everything's soaked. I'm trying not to soak my camera either here. Um, and you could see if we can get some bulbs. You can see right there, you can see that they're forming the red beet underneath the ground there. So they're looking awesome. The carrots, we finished thinning. And what we did was we thinned heavier on this row because I want them really big for um, cold storage. And then we thinned, I guess, I guess closer. We left them closer here because these here will be for fresh eating, for canning, for um, anything like, like that, which we're going to start eating here fresh carrots and with them about two weeks. And so we decided that we wanted, it didn't matter if they were so huge, just kind of a nice medium sized carrot. So these, this job is finished. We taught you guys how to thin on the last video. So check that out on episode 20. We talked a lot more about thinning carrots. So another bean row, they're also blooming. Um, the tomatoes here, let's see what we got going here. I mean, there is buds right there, um, but, but they're not doing much. I've never seen, these are cherry tomatoes here. I've never seen them so late. Like I've had bad years, let me tell you, I have bad years growing garden, but they have always set tomatoes. And I mean, they're open. Look at that, they're open, but there's no tomatoes yet. So I'm still worried about all of these tomato plants setting. I mean, there's a whole bunch here. Come on. So let's move on to the broccoli and huge development on the broccoli. We actually got heads. We actually have heads that are forming. Take a look. That is exciting. Now, I'm going to also remind that this year was probably the worst year to try to do an experiment with the cabbage family because there is no white butterflies. The main reason why I'm doing it is because of the white butterflies and for some reason there is no white butterflies. And I had to pull off the the 
um, fabric because these crazy broccoli are pushing it up because there's so much, there's perfect weather for them. They're growing huge. I've never had broccoli this high and this gorgeous before, ever. It's always been worm eating. The cabbage heads, Grace, show them. Like, like the cabbage is forming heads. Yeah. There's very little pests on them. Like it, it is just one of those absolutely insane year. So I'm gonna have to try this experiment on another year. I, you know what? It's kind of disappointing that I have to say that, but we have no white butterflies. So I am like super excited there. The heads, look at that. That's how much they've grown since the last time. This is absolutely awesome. Awesome. The the um, kale is ready for a neat, nice salad tonight, Grace. Go harvest this kale for a beautiful salad tonight. Um, we got some more cabbage here. Their heads are forming just beautifully. I'm going to sneak over here for a moment. And this is the butternut squash. And so you can see it's it's growing really well. There is no flowers yet on it so we'll see what happens there within a week they are starting to set to to flower but they are not flowering yet okay move down to the zucchini and what do i see a huge zucchini right there so we're gonna pull that later here today and i'm sure there's more zucchini in here yeah, there's some back there. Yeah, there, there's a little one right there. And there, there's one right there yeah. coming. So there, there's zucchini everywhere here. Literally, we're, we are what? Harvesting about 10 zucchini every four or five days. So the other thing when you get a lot of zucchini is you can grade the zucchini raw, put it in bags, seal the bags and freeze it in let's say two cups and that way when you want zucchini for zucchini loaves or whatever you're making you just pull out that that frozen zucchini already grated thaw it out dump it into your baking and there you have it so we got now this is the experiment row and again absolutely beautiful the only difference is is that the cabbage is about two weeks behind the other one, but they are starting to form the heads. So they're looking good. It looks like I may lose a little cabbage plant right here. It's really stunted for some reason. We got some really nice um, bulbs, but I do notice that there is zero bite marks of pests. Well, I do have some bite marks in my other cabbage rows that were covered. This row here, with the marigolds has zero um, hole damage from any pests. So that's something to note. The broccoli is a little bit further behind, but if you can see right here, we do have a little head forming. So it is coming. It is not near as dark in color as it is over there and, and not near as tall. The cauliflower here, I don't see any heads forming yet in the cauliflower. So we just, we don't have any cauliflower heads forming at the moment. And then we have the cucumbers. Grace, you want to see if you can find us some cucumbers. Yeah. We have pulled our first cucumber yesterday. And, and there's another cucumber right there. Take a look. Grace, you want to point to it there? Right here. There it is. Okay, so we got another cucumber there. So we're getting one here and one there. So we are up, would say, two weeks from a big harvest. So then it's like every week a canning and and um, we're going to do that. And I will film myself canning cucumbers this year and the, the beans. The previous year I did carrots and red beets, so I won't repeat because when I when I'm filming a canning video, it is incredibly in depth. So I will just link those videos to the the um to the other canning video as well, so you have it all together. Grace has found another, another cucumber. 
Take a look at that. Beautiful. And you can just see all the flowers. So we're, we're doing really good here right now. Praise God for the little bit of sun that we do have. I am impressed with some of the plants on how well they are doing. So that basically covers it. I miss the dill. Um, the dill has taken off here. So grow, grow, grow my little dill um, as the cucumbers are coming. And the lettuce is doing well. We took away the radishes because they're all wormy and gross. And the, the lettuce here is ready to get harvested again for the third time. And the romaine right here, we've been harvesting it and it's ready to go for another um, round of salad. So looking good. Grace, let's, let's show them um, the, the herbs here for a moment. And we have some hyssop that is starting to bloom and we had harvested beforehand. And when this bed gets really big and ready, I will show you guys how to do herbs. Now, my question to you while you guys are listening to this is I won't be doing obviously a garden series next year, but I was thinking of devoting maybe next year to herbs. So wild crafting a lot of different kind of herbs um, what to use how to make herb tea blends um, where to look how to make tinctures um, how to harvest let's say the chamomile for next year all these kind of things basically everything to do with herbs so what I do with the marshmallow root right over there how to harvest its leaves the raspberry leaves the strawberry leaves just herbs if this is something that would interest you let me know because I'm sort of leaning that way for next year to dive into depth in a herb 101 series for the entire summer so let me know what you think. Also, if there is any other series or topic that um, I could do that you want me to do or have an idea, comment. I want to hear, hear from you. So this is the chamomile. Take a look at how much it has grown. Um, it's doing super well. And like I said, this year I am not going to touch it. So it is literally going to go into seed, which is really hard to see it do it. But once you got it set up, you'll have chamomile forever. And chamomile is such a wonderful um, tea that I want this whole thing into chamomile, chamomile which is no problem. The marjoram, unfortunately, the rain has literally almost devastated and it is not coming back very, very quickly. And I might just not have any marjoram this year. And it has all to do with the weather. This is um, oregano. It's doing really well. So we're going to come around here and we're gonna we can literally start cutting the parsley and drying it it's looking really good so the color is awesome it's really nice and green and ready to go so all in all I mean given the weather given what's what's going on weather wise because gardening is really impacted by the weather what I got and I, you know, suffered some losses here or there, but all in all, it's doing phenomenal. You know, the tomatoes would be my biggest loss, one of my biggest losses if they don't set within a week here. So, but I'm also very thankful for the beautiful red beets coming, the beautiful carrots coming, the pumpkins that are doing so well, the chamomile that is growing, growing, the cucumbers coming, the dill growing, the corn setting, the peas growing. I got so much to be thankful for. As a gardener, you have to remember that there will always be a loss somewhere. Okay, so don't don't ever get so disappointed like, oh man, you did something horrible. You can't grow tomatoes because they are not setting. It's just the year. It's okay. This is St. John's wort. This is an absolutely beautiful flower. The bees go crazy over it. 
It also makes really good tea, popping off the flowers. Same with the leaves. Um, it's just an absolutely beautiful plant. So the last thing we need to do, Grace, mm -hmm. show them the way we have the peppers to take a look at in the orchard. And I got a little surprise too for you guys, which is just absolutely um, phenomenal to watch is we have those blackberries have little little berries green berries growing and we have my elderberries they're starting to flower now i'm pretty sure that it is way too late in the season for them to turn to berries but we're going to have flowers and the flowers themselves are really really important herbs so if I don't get berries, I'll harvest the flowers this year and they'll make a really incredibly delicious tea. So, cause I do tons of tea blends. Anyway, so I'm really happy. This is the first year we've gotten flowers since I've planted them in the orchard. So I am thrilled. Okay, off to the peppers. My poor sad peppers. That's all I can say. They are growing, but they are struggling. They've got little flower buds coming. We may get something. They definitely aren't my two foot high beautiful plants that I usually have, but they are growing. So that's always a good thing. The blackberries, this is so cool. This is, remember this is the first year they've bloomed and take a look. There's these little blackberries everywhere on them and you can see the, the little green berries starting to grow. So that's really cool. And that, that particular plant is loaded so, so we'll give them what, I don't know how fast they mature. They're growing way slower than a, a raspberry is growing. So they probably are still about, I would say a month off. So all in all, I mean taking a look at the orchard here while I close up. There's, there's strawberries right there. We've been getting at least 50 strawberries a day off of that patch at the moment. So things are looking good, okay? They're looking really good. We're not quite at harvest time, but we are getting close where I'm gonna be in the kitchen. We're gonna show you how to harvest and get stuff ready, but we're still middle July. August is the real harvest thing a month. It's crazy, long hours in the kitchen, long hours outside picking, and a lot of teamwork. So, few more updates, and then we are going to start harvesting, as long as the weather is cooperative. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.